Hi, I'm Laurie and welcome to Plant Lounge. Today I'm going to talk about the humble bell pepper. I just got my first allotment at the end of last year and um, as a result of that I am now just obsessed and immersed in learning all about growing my own produce. So my allotment site just now, when I got it, it was like knee high in weeds. It needs a lot of work. So I'm still in the process of trying to get rid of all the weeds so that I can start planting out there. So I have my garlic and my onions out there already, but that's it. So I'm doing stuff from home just now and I thought I would start with the bell pepper because I have them in my fridge, they have seeds. And I thought at the end of last year, I thought, you know, what? I'm just gonna try and grow them from seed. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how I do it from the pepper, the seed to the seedling. And then I have some bigger versions here that I planted out um, quite a few months ago. And I want to show you how I crop the top off them just to encourage healthier growth at the sides. So you need to top, take off the growth tip, which is where all the hormones are. So all the energy is going up to the top, but you want your plant to be a bit, a bit fuller and a bit sturdier so that it can take the weight of one of these peppers. One, one, we want more than one. It can take the weight of a few of these peppers. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to show you how I take the seeds out, how I germinate them, and, uh, and we'll start from there. So for this part, you will need, um, a red pepper. Now it does make a difference that you're not doing this with a yellow or a green pepper because the red peppers are the most ripe so therefore their seeds will be the most viable. So you need your red pepper. This is just a supermarket bought red pepper. You will need a knife to cut it, a chopping board, a spoon to scoop out the seeds and then I use these little glass ramekins to put the seeds in and leave them in there for a few days to dry out. So here we go. So I chop off the sides of the pepper. I'm just working my way around, not to damage where the seeds are. And then I take off this bottom part. And then all of that can go for my lunch later. This pepper doesn't seem to have a huge amount of seeds. I don't know if you can see them there, but I will take those ones. And normally, I do use a spoon to do this. If you see that, they just scrape off and go into the little tub. Oh, little rogue one there. They go into the little glass ramekin, but you can use your fingers. It's absolutely fine to do it either way. And there is the seeds that I have taken from that pepper. Now, normally you do get a huge amount more than that. For example, this is some that I did a few days ago and they have all been dried out. You can hear when they're dry, they're rattling about. And this was all from one pepper, so I suppose it's just the luck of the draw as to how many seeds are in the peppers. So these are the ones that I will be planting um, starting off today because these ones that I have just taken out of the pepper will need to sit for a few days to dry. So you can't, you don't, you don't want to plant them when they're wet like this. You want to dry them out first and then plant them. So they will be going off to the side into a cool, dry area. So I just sit them on my worktop in my kitchen and then literally within a day or two, they'll be absolutely ready to either plant out into little individual, I use these um, trays here, or what you can do is just pop them into a little brown envelope or a little bag, and then you can store them away until you're ready to use them. So the next step when you're ready to plant out is finding something to plant them in. So I use these little um, seedling trays, and uh, but you can use anything. You can use old yogurt pots or party cup, or you know anything that you can pierce some holes in as long as there's drainage if you can see there's drainage at the bottom of each of these little cells so I'm just going to pop some peat free soil in there so give me a second so that's my soil in my tray I'm using peat free soil and um, because I'm trying to start off my veg gardening just being as environmentally aware as I can I'm um, using peat free compost is, is a very good start so let's get sewing. What I use when I'm sewing my seeds is either a chopstick or a dabber. 
dipper, <laughs> not a dabber, a dibber. So either of these are absolutely fine. You can use a pencil or metal straw or something like that. But what I tend to do is use the dipper for the larger seeds to make create a larger hole. And I will use chopsticks for small seeds like this. So all you need to do is just go in and make your little space. Just give it a wee wiggle around, make your little hole. And I'll just do these ones that are on camera that you can see, so I'm not having to move things about. And um, let's go with these. Oh, let's go with these two. And then all you do is pick up your seed, and I just put one in per cell, and then pop them in with your fingers. Oh, I'm not sure if one went in there, so let's just pop another one. Um, difficult to grab because they're so tiny but you could use tweezers if you wanted to or some people use a matchstick and just wet the end of the flat end of a matchstick and then dab it on and it seems to just suction to it but you know it's fine to just use your fingers as well and I've just got two more that I have holes in here and let's get them in and then all I do is just use my chopstick and just lightly cover it over again just like so and just cover these ones over it just takes minutes to sew so there we go with all the seeds that I have popped in there two more that are off camera here and that's it and then I give them just a gentle squeeze down you don't want to compact the soil because you want the roots to have a certain amount of room to grow and uh, and then that's it so all I do now is grab my watering can and just water them in so how easy and simple is that don't overwater them just give them enough just to get them started and that should be enough for them and there we go and then the waiting process begins now these I would normally put peppers in the heated propagator but my propagator at this time of the year is absolutely jam-packed as you can imagine it is April so the seed starting has begun in earnest so I will be popping these over by a sunny window so they may take slightly longer to germinate but definitely within a few weeks you will have some substantial growth that then moves me on to one that I have already sewn. So, so I've already potted some on from a previous sewing. So I sewed these ones quite a few weeks ago now. They're now big enough to move into a pot this size. As soon as you see, so these are the original leaves. And um, as soon as you see these true leaves come through you'll see there's two more coming through here then you're at the stage that you can pot them on don't pot them on when you when it's just the two original leaves wait till the true leaves come through because the plant will have a better chance of surviving so there we go i have a few of these all potted on and don't forget to label your, your plants either because I plant lots, I'm planting lots of peppers this year. So I'm doing sweet pointy peppers, I'm doing chilli peppers, a couple of varieties. So you really need to know what you're growing. So I just use the, these little sticky things. They're easy to peel off so that you can reuse the pots again and relabel them. So that's one of my babies growing along nicely. So I'm going to show you now three that I have been growing for quite a few months and uh, I'm going to show you how to just take the heads off them just to encourage some healthier growth and a better yield. So here are some bell peppers that I have previously grown from seed from a shop-bought um, pepper and uh, these three, you'll see them here, they are all from the same pepper and you'll see they're all different sizes. So this one's a bit stockier, this one's rather leggy, slightly, um, this is the biggest out of the three. So this is the healthiest plant. So I had all three of them potted out in this pot. And I think what's happened is that this one has been taking all the nutrients and has had the best spot for light and it's grown bigger and better. And these two have just suffered a little bit. 
So I'm going to top them now, try and encourage healthier growth at the sides and to encourage a healthier stock. And uh, because these actually have sat for quite a few weeks now and actually haven't grown any. So although I've been watering and feeding, they still are being a little bit dramatic, shall we say. So um, I'm going to take the tips off them. And what you need to do is take the growth tip so here you'll see it in there, the growth tip. So just now, the, all the energy from the plant is going there to try and encourage, you know, to grow bigger and taller. When you want to remove that to encourage it to grow out to the sides. So if you see here, just, I think I might take it even just underneath here and just remove all of that. And then that should encourage healthier growth at the sides. So what you need is a sharp pair of scissors and you need to just go in like that. And this is the, the dramatic bit. It feels so cruel, but actually in the long run, it's definitely worth it. So you just take the top off and now it looks all bizarre and a little bit straggly and something has been eating this one's leaf. But that really will encourage a fuller plant. So let's just do the same with this one. So this one is the little growth tip. Oh, hello, my hand completely in front of the camera. The little growth tip is about here. So again, in with your scissors and snip. <laughs> and off it goes. So number two done. And this is the one that I'm a bit nervous about because I have let this one grow on a bit too long without taking the top off. So you'll see that this is the main stem here, but there's a secondary stem that seems really healthy. So I'm not going to touch that. I'm just going to take the top off this leggy, leggy stem here. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to take it actually maybe about here. So lower down, but I'm going to leave this little leaf here, but I'm just going to take it here and I'm just going to knock it off. And there we go. I've taken that off. So all the energy from the plant will now focus on this, 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 this bit here and will hopefully produce a very good yield of peppers for me. Now, as I say, this is my first year growing peppers, so I can't show you anything from last year. But what I will do is a follow up video and I will show you just how many peppers I managed to get from these and then also the ones that I've just planted out as well. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Can you hear my dog barking in the background? Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you would like to like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. Please hit the bell so that you get notified. I'm going to be doing lots of little videos just on my progress with my little allotment as a first time allotmenteer. And uh, I will catch you very, very soon. Thanks now. Bye.